Hey everybody. I'm sure many of you may know that I recently replaced this piece of crap ID USB adapter with a better ID USB adapter. After a long, agonizing three days worth of waiting on this piece of garbage to transfer 20 gigs worth of files off of an ID drive, I said, you know what? I've had enough of this thing. Um, over several years, it's, it's been it's been a real piece of garbage. Um, it would it would always when you go to actually copy stuff from it, you'd have these long pauses between file transfers. It would just like it just froze up and just waited and waited and waited. Now it actually still was detected by the computer and the drive was still detected, but when the Explorer would hang and things like that, and when this thing did transfer stuff. It was on the um, level of like kilobytes per second. <laughs> you, can, you can forgive about megabytes per second. This thing has always been so unstable that um, I could not actually clone a disk with it. Being the destination disk being attached to this, it would fail. It would always fail somewhere after taking forever. So, of course, I went on Amazon and bought this Fantech adapter, and it's been fantastic. It's been very reliable. I can clone IDE drives with it, and it also includes a SATA hookup over here. And, of course, offers the USB 3.0 interface, so it works quite well, I have to say. But I figured before I throw this piece of garbage away, why not take a chance to actually look inside and see what's in there? Now, something of this nature is you know there's not really much in there but I figure we'd take a look anyway I've already been inside to have a look so getting it open should be pretty easy now there's not much to it really that's the bottom side of the PCB that's the top side of course, this side here is your laptop ID interface. You plug a laptop drive in here, then you plug this into your computer, and the laptop drive would actually get its power off of this interface because that's how ID laptop hard drives were. They were powered off of their ID interface. The desktop interface, of course, you have to supply your own power, which they did provide a power supply with this adapter. And it's amazing this brick here, although being you know it's, it's actually a full size brick with a standard you know, PC desktop PC power socket here. Um, this thing no longer actually works properly. It still works, but it doesn't. Hard drives don't get along with it too well. Um, they'll sometimes power powering up hard drives. The hard drives will spin up and they'll shut off and they'll spin up and they'll shut off and they'll spin up and they'll shut off. I can still power fans and stuff all this, but um, yeah, it was rated for two amps on the 12 volt rail and two amps on the 5 volt rail. Not too much, but enough for your hard drive that was connected. So I may open this up in a later video. I don't know I'm, because I, st I still might use it for random things. But this is the, of course, the adapter, and most of what goes on here is actually through this little guy right here. That is. Get you a good focus on it. You might be able to see it here through the camera. Helps if you turn the thing right side up. That is a PL250. Whoops. This camera won't stay still. It is a PL250. Two five zero. I think that's a six. C. Let me look with my bare eyes and see. I think it's a six. Let's look up so we can find a data sheet on it. Okay, so our little IC is again the PL twenty five zero six high speed USB to ID bridge controller, and we'll just look up a data sheet. Okay, the chip itself, as as we saw, PL 
It was actually a PL2506C, but we'll look up the one for PL2506. And this is what you have here. Not really too much to it. Um, so it actually, it likes 3.3 volt power. So, when we look at our board, you can see how they accomplish this. Likely through this AMSB device here. I think that's probably a DC to DC converter. So here is our DC to DC conversion. Again, AMSB 11, yeah, 1117T33. Simply known as the AMS 1117. One amp. Low, low dropout voltage regulator. Three terminal adjustable or fixed voltages. 1.5 volt, 1.8 volt, 2.5 volt, 2.85 volt, 3.3 volt, and 5 volts. So, now the one we have is actually the T33. This is the one that we have. This is the um, surface mount right there. So you have ground adjust. Number two is V out. Three is V in. So it simply takes in five volts and steps it down to 3.3 volts. So that's how our PL2506 gets its power. Have your USB 2.0 interface. And that's sort of like a block diagram of the um, of the chip itself. Now, um, this thing has four has has four kilobytes of onboard RAM. You see, Turbo eighty thirty two controller, twenty kilobyte ROM. It's kind of like an all in one device, really. All there is to it, and. <laughs> not to say it, it's not to, to be honest with you it actually did a better job interfacing with CD-ROMs than it did with hard drives I've used this thing on several occasions to do clean installs of Windows on my like my netbook for example when I didn't have an ISO on a USB stick to install with matter of fact that netbook um, matter of fact I think I had problems clean installing off of a USB stick on it really so I always have I think I've always had to use like a I can't remember for sure but I, I there for a while I was, I was using a CD drive to do Windows installs on it and I always use this little guy here so of course other than you know some surface mount resistors and, and capacitors and whatnot you have of course the 12 megahertz crystal Right there, there's your 12 megahertz crystal. Yeah, that's that's all there is to the thing. This is primarily this chip right there. I have to say, it wasn't all that great. I'll have to give you that. Um, yeah. I guess, you know, for its time, it was actually pretty decent. But nowadays, it's a piece of crap. I've had this thing since, I think, 2008 or 2009. So it is quite old. Anyways, I know this might be a little boring for some of you guys, but that's a look inside of a basic ID to USB adapter. And this is the chip that is in charge of this particular adapter. The PL2506 high speed USB to ID bridge controller. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. I sure hope you guys enjoyed this video from Q Computer Channel. Remember to like the video, subscribe to Q Computer Channel for more updates, and remember to tick the bell so that we actually get notified of these updates. Did you know that I am also on a second channel that's CubeComp MTDX? Over there you'll find videos of bicycling, weather, elevators, 
and all this other neat and interesting stuff. Feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. And again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.